was an issue with the network and uh, Nikhat was trying to help me a lot. So sorry for keeping you waiting. Uh, I hope everybody is. Uh, so this is our, yeah, thank you so much. So today we are going to take a random open session in which way since we have almost completed our portion. So, uh, okay, so yeah. So anything which you want to understand from me, like we said, we, we will be doing the revision today. So yes, anything particular which you would like me to take and uh, I'm happy to take, uh, of, of course, in terms of, okay. Okay, corporate well part. Okay, we'll go one by one. Let's go one by one. So I hope you're able to see the, uh we'll go one by one so that it will be easy for you one at a time guys okay yes so one at a time Oh, yes, we can do the legal principles as well from chapter five. Can you just tell me the page number as well? Uh, One forty. Okay. Yeah, we did the legal principles. Now we'll do the uh, yeah. So we did the we'll do this legal uh, principles. So uh, this would be uh, very important again in terms of your understanding. Uh, there have been always two, uh, questions from the students that, uh, ma'am, how to solve this? Uh, ma'am, uh, this the, we are not understanding. The answer is not given about this. So uh, can we just concentrate over here? I'll just take four or five legal principles and then we can move on to the other topics like I told you. Today, it will be exclusively the revisions which we have uh, been taking and if there is something else which we can take. Okay, so let's concentrate or uh, 10 15 minutes on this and then we can take it ahead. Yeah, so uh, Yes, so we will take say for example this. Uh, I'm on principle. Uh, I'm on uh, example number three. Okay. A uh, contract is an agreement which the law will enforce. Uh, now, what is the legal principle over here? A contract is an agreement uh, which the law will enforce. Uh, am I audible? Okay, great. Yes. Uh, so, a contract is a legal uh, is an agreement which the law will enforce. All agreements are contracts if they are made with free consent by parties competent to contract for a lawful consideration and with a lawful object. So this is the legal principle which we know when we have studied contract. Now, what is the situation they have given? And please concentrate over here because these kind of situations can come in your exam and then based upon that example, you will have to understand and then decide what is the right answer. So what is the factual situation they have given? Mr. Raja offered to buy Mr. Ram's car for rupees 5 lakh. Okay, so uh, Raja is offering to buy Ram's car for 5 lakh, but Mr. Ram refused. Subsequently, Mr. Raja threatened to kill Ram, Mr. Ram, and Mr. Ram agreed to the sale. Now, Mr. Ram subsequently rescinded from the contract. Mr. Raja sued en to enforce the contract. Now the question which they have asked you is, will uh, succeed, will Mr. Raja su uh, will succeed because Mr. Raja was offering lawful consideration for the car. Will succeed, Mr. Raja will succeed because buying and selling of car is lawful. Mr. Raja will succeed because both the parties have capacity to contract. 
now mr raja uh, suits raja suit to enforce the contract will fail because mr ram was enforced to agree to the contract now this is what yes exactly so most of you are answering me in the chat box and which is what you have uh, correctly understood now uh, most of the uh, students did ask me that ma'am there is no answer given which is the correct answer so the answer lies in the legal principle which they have mentioned over here this is the legal principle which is important and basis which the factual question is being asked so here obviously since there is what mr raja threatened to kill mr ram and then mr ram agreed to the sale so he said okay i'll kill you then only uh, if you if you don't sell me that car now obviously because he threatened to kill that's why mr ram agreed to do and that is the reason what it is yes it is coercion like most of you have answered it's coercion so whether the consent over here is free consent which is been given the answer is no so here uh what is important though though there were party there the uh, contract is an agreement which will which the law will enforce we saw right what is the definition of contract so here even though the parties are competent to contract even if there is uh, the consideration which is flowing even if there is everything else but what is not present is the consent which is not free and that's why the answer d is correct will fail mr raja uh, threatened to kill mr ram and now he is uh, he is enforcing the contract by way of filing a suit but do you think the suit will uh, succeed no the suit will fail because mr ram was forced to agree to the contract so here that's what the principle is and answer d becomes your correct answer so i hope you get this so we'll go to the another principle a contract is an agreement which the law will enforce all agreements are contracts if they are made with the free consent by parties competent to contract for a lawful consideration and with a lawful object now what is the question okay this is not something which you have to remember guys okay you you this is all deriving out of the contract act which we have learned so you don't have to say this is principle number 1 principle number 2 principle number 18 no please don't take it like this this is the gist which they have helped you to answer this question so we have already studied in contract what is free consent what is a uh, lawful consideration when a particular thing can be termed as contract this is just an analogy and an example which they have given you as an faq where some uh, kind of such uh, examples may be created and they may ask you whether what is the right answer to this so you have to apply the contract act so the principle even what they are mentioning here is the answer which they are trying to help you out okay so they will not give the principle in the exam i don't think so that will happen that is the principle which you have studied in the contract that okay when is a contract is uh, with the free consent whether there is a coercion so you have to apply your mind over here to understand and uh, answer the factual situation so i hope you are clear with this so mr joy a young boy of 27 years without any consideration agrees to give miss julie rupees 10000 mr joy fails to fulfill his promise mr jo uh, julie miss julie sues mr joy for the amount now what do you think what is the answer yes b is the answer so what are the options they have given you miss julie will succeed as mr joy made the promise of his free will so is it the question of free will which is being mentioned answer is no miss julie will fail as the agreement is without consideration okay so and let's see also other options miss julie will succeed as mr joy has the capacity so is it talking about the capacity the answer is no miss julie will succeed as the money is not being paid for any 
uh, illegal object. So is it talking about the object over here? No. So what is a, it is without consideration. They have clearly mentioned, right? So this is what your application of your mind you have to do. Or you have studied contract. You have studied the, uh, what is the, uh, what can be termed as contract? What can be termed as free will? Now, whether uh, if this was a, a gift which was being made and it was in writing and then there is no consideration, then whether this is okay. So all these things become uh, very important. Whatever we have studied, the same things they have mentioned over here, but with examples to help you understand that how in exam things can come. So in exams, you may expect just factual situation and decide. And which one is the right answer? They will not give you the legal principle. Okay, I hope this is clear to you. Okay, let's do, uh, let's take another example of, uh, yes, let's take seventh one. Company means a company incorporated under the Companies Act 2013 or under any previous law. So this is the definition of company. Again, I hope you're understanding. This is the principle derived from what? Yes, the de principle derived from what? Can anybody tell me? What? Yes, Companies Act, where it is written? Anybody? Yes, Companies Act, where it is written? Section two, which section? Yes, so basically this is the definition of company. If you see closely, this is the definition of how company is defined. Company means a company incorporated under the Companies Act or under any previous company law. So are you getting how these are being structured? Because I, I got many questions or WhatsApp email on these uh, legal principles and that's why I want to deliberate this, that the legal principle is derived from the definition. So if we have discussed this a number of times that company means a company incorporated under the Companies Act or any previous law. So this is what the definition which you should have known. Okay. Now the factual question is ABC Limited is incorporated under the Companies Act 1956. ABC LLP incorporated under the LLP Act 2008. ABC and company registered under the Partnership Act 1832 and ABC Charitable Trust established under the Trust Act 1882. Now, which of the above entity as mentioned in the factual situation is a company? So what do you think? What is the answer? Yes, A is the answer because if you see ABC LLP is LLP. ABC and company registered partnership is a partnership and ABC charitable trust is a trust. So ABC limited is the only uh, company which is incorporated. So that's why which is the company it is ABC limited. So I hope you're getting what you're trying to solve over here and please don't uh, mug up these principles. These principles are not to be mugged up. These principles are derived from the definitions for from the sections which we have okay now we'll take some other example yes let's take this the members of both lok sabha and rajya sabha are eligible to be ministers of the union government so this is the principle which we have understood from uh, the constitution. Now, Mr. Ram Singh is sitting member of upper house of parliament and recommendations of prime minister of India, uh, president of India appointed Mr. Ram Singh as minister for ministry of education. Now decide appointment of Mr. Ram Singh as minister of education is valid. What do you think? Yes. Okay, great. So this is how I guess you're understanding. This is a very simple questions which are being answered. Now uh, we'll see uh, some other questions as well.
Okay, let's take this another constitution example. Yes. So under article, because some of you are saying, uh, let's take uh, a 19th example. So I'm taking this. Uh, under article 12, unless the context otherwise requires, the state includes. Now the definition I've told you, the state is not what we just understand in common parlance. That is the Maharashtra state and all. That is not what we have discussed. That is also state, but the definition under the constitution uh, is different. So under Article 12, unless the context otherwise requires, the state includes the government and the parliament of India, the government or and legislature of each state and all local or authorities within the territory of India under the control of the government of India. Now this is the principle which we have studied. And if you remember, this is what we discussed that just don't imagine that state what we normally call does not mean state or it has a wider meaning under article 12 of the constitution. So here the question is, Mr. Arvin is employed with ONGC. He faces discrimination at work at the hands of management and thinks that uh, his uh, right to equality is violated. He contemplates moving a writ petition against ONGC, but his colleague says, suggests that Mr. Arvind will not succeed because ONGC is not state. What do you think now? What is the answer? ONGC is state? Yes. Why it is state? What do you think? Why it is a state? ONGC is a state or not? Some are saying yes, some are saying no. <laughs> See, the reason being which you have to ask question is, now ONGC, whether it is controlled by government? Yes, it is controlled by government. Yes, so if it is controlled by government, what do you think the answer will be? Thank you. So I hope you are understanding this. Uh, good. So we'll take some other examples. Okay, let's take this 24. The right of all citizens to practice any profession or to carry on any occupation, trade or business is a fundamental right. Okay. So this is the fundamental right uh, which we have seen that you can practice. We have discussed this at brief that you can practice any profession or carry any occupation, trade or business. Now the question which they see uh, guys, you will have to understand uh, this is all based upon the application of your mind with respect to the problems. I hope you understand by this what I mean by application of mind. Now this is what you have studied. But what is important is you don't mug up all the sections. That is not what is required. You understand those sections and then understand the language which is being used in that section or article for that matter in terms of constitution. So what is important is you first understand what is a concept and then once you understand that concept that okay, this is what state is, this is what contract is, this is what company is. This is the liabilities of the company. These are the advantages of the company, etc. So then solving these problems is just a real life examples which you get kind of. And then how are you going to apply what you have studied and make the uh, and, and find out the answer to this question. So here, if you see the legal principles are more or less the uh, law which they are helping you to help you to solve this question. And ideally, even if that legal principle is not being mentioned, you should have known about this since we have studied all the uh, contract or constitution. And then you have to just apply your mind to what you have studied. Okay. So if this is the situation due to the law passed by the government, even a person with good knowledge of law cannot appear in the court as lawyer unless he has some uh, law degree from a recognized university and fulfills other mandatory conditions. So due to this, Mr. Dinesh is not able to appear in courts 
and believes that government is denying him of his fundamental right to practice any profession or to carry out any uh, occupation, trade or business. He decides uh, to challenge this as a violation of his fundamental right. What do you think? He will succeed? Yes, what do you think he will succeed? No, why? Because the answer here is C, that is, he will fail because the government is well within its rights to prescribe eligibility and other conditions for profession, trade or business. So what we have seen that do you have you may have certain rights, but those are not absolute and that can come with certain restrictions attached to it. So similarly here, if a person has the right to practice, yes, he can. Nobody is stopping him from becoming a lawyer. But for that, he has to obtain a law degree. He has to fulfill the conditions and uh, apply to the bar council. And then only he'll be able to practice as a lawyer. So that's why this is a principle which is that anybody has got the right to practice, but what it can come with the uh, certain restrictions. Now tomorrow anybody would want to become a doctor and just start practicing, right? It won't be uh, in the right interest of the public at large as well. So there are certain restrictions which may come that, okay, you have to uh, pass the degree, you have to pass this qualification, you have to have this qualification, you have to get yourself acquainted and likewise. So these are the things which are being uh, mentioned. Now, I hope you understand this. Now we'll uh, see if there are some other uh, kind of uh, company law or any other. Okay, so I hope uh, uh, we can take uh, the revision now uh, in terms of logical reasoning. I guess most of you are willing to take uh, this. So uh, we will, yes, so once we, we, we are uh, done uh, with this. So any, any questions on, uh, before I move on to the logical reasoning part, is there any question or which any particular I'm asking? You can't say, ma'am, just start. So you can't say this constitution. Just help me that if you have any uh, questions around uh, in terms of we have not understood. Okay, we'll go one by one. So that becomes easy for you to understand. Uh, constitution, I guess we saw the broad framework, federal, unitary. Uh, we also saw fundamental rights. Uh, okay, fundamental rights, then we saw what is state. Uh, so if you see the local authorities referred to our municipal is district courts, yes. Uh, then justifiability of fundamental rights is also we have seen. Right to of equality, we have seen again. Uh, what is important is you understand what is right to equality, right of equality, whether it is freedom of speech, uh, then again, abolition of title. So you have to understand the principles behind this. Okay, this becomes very important. Okay, great. Some of you are saying that happy to you as lectures we understood clearly, ma'am. Great. So then uh, that is not a challenge. Uh, equality, prohibition of discrimination, I guess we have seen. Okay, uh, equal opportunity in matters of public employment. Okay, we have seen this. Abolition of titles, we, we refer, right? that uh, the degree titles like doctor, lawyer, advocate, and colonel are all out of getting a qualification or a position. So those have not been abolished. The titles like sir, which used to have, or some kind of giving a special treatment, Rai Saheb, Rai Bahadur Saheb, people can say something out of respect that is different, but these were the titles which were being offered uh, just to create a difference. So that's also leads to differentiation of uh, people. So that is what not is uh, any more uh, abolition of titles. Okay, uh, great. So man, most of you are saying your teaching is so good that we have no doubts. Okay, <laughs> great. Uh, six freedom of citizens we have studied. Uh, okay, what else? 
Okay, most of you are saying uh, writs. Uh, so I'll just touch upon writs because that's what I had seen in the chat box. Uh, okay, thank you. You're superb, ma'am. Thank you for your compliments. Uh, we'll just take uh, writs because most of you have just mentioned that, ma'am, writs, please. Okay, I'll take writs. So in very nutshell, I'm going to explain again uh, so that we cover uh, what is mandamus and what is uh, certiorari and what is habeas corpus. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Uh, okay. Where is the writs portion? Okay. So writs. Okay. Concentrate. Okay. Quick two minutes and uh, we are going to. Uh, <laughs> thank you. Up super save you super. Okay. Thank you for the comments. Okay. Let's concentrate. Okay. Uh, the rate of habeas corpus. Now, what is this? Habeas corpus, you have to remember, it is about bring your, to have the body, okay? So mostly when it is applicable, uh, whenever there is a detention of a person, when there, when there is a restriction on the movement of the person, the right of the person, he is not able, he is deprived, then of course uh, this writ is being filed, habeas corpus. So it is, the word literally means to have body. When a prima facie case for the issue of writ has been made, the court rules a uh, rule nisi upon the relevant authority to show cause why the writ should not be issued. So basically, it will be always that why this is should not be done. So the writ has to be obeyed by detaining authority by producing the person before the court. So this is important. Uh, and if you see, uh, no man can be punished or deprived of his personal liberty except for violation of law. So this is very important that if somebody is being detained, if some authority without any uh, legal uh, manner, without any legal recourse, just detain somebody, uh, then you can have this writ uh, being, you can apply, have the usage of this writ by saying that bring the body, to have the body is to bring the person in the court. You can't just detain somebody. So this is about a uh, habeas corpus. Then what is mandamus? So basically it is about, if you understand, about a person's liberty, as simple as that, okay? In one uh, line, if I have to mention. Mandamus is what? Mandamus is to command, we command. So the writ of mandamus issued to direct any person corporation uh, uh, inferior court now this is being issued just understand how it differentiates is a command issued to any person corporation inferior court or government requiring him or it to do a particular thing specified therein which pertains to his or its office or and is further in the nature of public duty so this is again public duty. What are the keywords? Public duty issued to any inferior court. So maybe by a high court to a lower court. Uh, maybe by a supreme court to a high court. Okay. So basically issued to direct any person, corporation, inferior court. So which is inferior to it. And it is in the nature of public duty. So the writ is used when the inferior tribunal has declined to exercise jurisdiction while resort to certiorari and prohibition arises when the tribunal has wrongly exercised or exceeded its jurisdictions and are available only against judicial or and quasi-judicial bodies. Okay, so this is how uh, it becomes very important that uh, what when prohibition is used, when certiorari is used, and when mandamus is used. You have to kind of understand, and this is the gist of what is being mentioned over here. So mandamus can be issued against any public authority. So any public authority it be, uh, mandamus can be issued. Okay? So this is what mandamus is. Prohibition is what we have seen is to an inferior court. Now understand, the words used are inferior court, preventing the latter from usurping jurisdiction which is not legally vested in it. So this is what prohibition is about. 
and while mandamus commands activity prohibition commands inactivity it is available only against judicial or quasi judicial authorities and is not available against a public officer who is not vested with judicial functions so this is the difference between uh, mandamus and prohibition i hope you get it okay this is inactivity that don't do this prohibit and pro kind of a prohibition and mandamus is we command do this a direction okay and certiorari it is available to any person wherever anybody of persons any body of persons having legal authority to determine questions affecting the rights of subjects and have the duty to act judiciously judicially in excess of their legal authority so basically the writ removes the proceedings from such body to the court to quash a decision that goes beyond its jurisdiction now please remember uh, the differences which are being uh, mentioned over here when if it is prohibition uh, what is prohibition then what is where mandamus is used it can be issued to any any inferior court if you see it is for public duty prohibition is issued to inferior courts okay when there is an excess jurisdiction uh, without when a, when the tribunal like i told you if a tribunal has got an excess they excessively act which are not in their powers then this is used and certiorari is removes the proceedings from such body to the high court to quash a decision that goes beyond its jurisdiction so this is the difference i hope you understood i i see in the chat box that most of you have said that okay you have understood uh, so now we'll move on to the next okay so whenever you don't understand anything the best way to uh, you know understand a particular thing is try reading it more and more often okay try read it more often and often so that you understand and just don't limit to what is being mentioned try reading the uh, entire thing and then you get if you just read habeas corpus you may understand that you will not understand mandamus so when you read all the four thoughts again and again it definitely helps okay indian contract now i hope we have done enough on indian contract so any particular thing which you have in your mind which is not understood to you okay thank you man for teaching us what else okay so nobody has got any doubts in contract great so everybody is going to uh, score every, uh, good okay okay fine mm. okay you have you don't have any doubts in this section okay okay sama saying breach of contract so let me just touch upon breach of contract okay what is breach so i told you whenever there is a, a yes breach in simple language if i have to tell you what is breach of contract so i uh, i am going to say for example a is going to sell 1000 uh, goods to b simple on particular date say today is 22nd of june so a is going to sell particular goods to b and he said okay i'll deliver you that uh, goods on 25th of june you will get that delivery now what is going to what is happening is uh it is 25th of june today say for example and a has not still delivered the goods whereas b has already paid an advance to a and uh, everything the money is already being paid to a but uh, a has not delivered the goods now what is this now a has not fulfilled the obligations yes the promise which he has made that okay i will deliver you the goods on 25th of june you have to give me an advance which he has b has already given but a has failed to deliver the goods on a particular date now this is what this is what is called as breach of performance so breach can be anticipatory and breach can be uh, actual breach so here on 25th june we never got it today is again 26th of june for example 
एंटायर ट्वेंटी फिफ्थ डे ट्वेंटी फिफ्थ जून बी वेटेड बट ही नेवर गॉट द गुड्स फ्रॉम ए सो हियर वेर द प्रोमिसर नाइदर परफॉर्म्स इज कॉन्ट्रैक्ट नॉट डज ही टेंडर परफॉर्मेंस और वेर द परफॉर्मेंस इज डिफेक्टिव देर इज अ ब्रीच ऑफ कॉन्ट्रैक्ट सो हियर इफ ए डिलीवर नॉट डिलीवर द गुड्स एट ऑल he has breached the contract he did not perform his promise or he or does not tender performance or where the performance is defective so out of say 1000 goods b has either sent only 500 goods and did not send the remaining 500 till it is a breach or in case he has sent 1000 goods but say uh, 100 of the goods are defective in nature so here there is a performance which is defective and that is also um, that also amounts to breach of contract because here breach means which is not fulfilled the promise is not fulfilled as per what is agreed now a obviously agreed to have the good goods it is if the goods are defective then also it is a breach of contract which uh, a has uh a is liable for so a has breached the contract between a and b so i hope you understand is there something more you want to explain okay injunction means a temporary stoppage so whenever there is an injunction uh, it can be done by way of an injunction that don't do this anymore or stop here uh, like i told you if there is a building construction which is going on the land is belonging to me and one fine day i see that somebody is constructing on my land the first thing which i will do is stop that work which is going on so i may bring in bring in injunction okay that stop the work which they are which you are doing first so that the building does not get constructed till the time the litigation is on okay uh so i hope you have got breach now what else you want me to take okay now we'll go for torts yes what in torts you would like to understand okay okay mens rea some of you are asking what is mens rea let's understand this okay how far a guilty mind of the person is required for liability for tort okay so here what is important is what is mens rea so it is a maxim which we have studied actus non facit reum nisi mens rea so the act itself creates no guilt in the absence of a guilty mind now i'll give you two three examples for that so say for example A is going on the road and B attacks that uh, B attacks A. Okay, now A uh, kind of uh, in order to self defend uh, oneself, A kind of uh, beats B and B is now almost uh, he is not uh, he is severely injured. Now whether can you say that A had any mens rea in the mind? Whether A is a guilty person? What do you think? so you understood the example a is a guilty person yes i'm saying yes half answers yes is half answers no so i like repeat again a is just walking on the road and suddenly b kind of attacks a and in order to self defend a so a kind of also beats a b because he was beating so in the fight which happened between a and b a uh, kind of uh, beats b and therefore b is now injured now whether can you say that a has got is there a mens rea involved in the mind of a i am asking okay no so the answer is no because a did not beat b because he didn't uh, he had some motive in his mind he did it to self defend himself because a, b was beating him so here what is important is was there any guilt in the mind of guilty whether a did have a guilty mind or b had a guilty mind what do you think yes b had a guilty mind right a did not have any guilty mind he did it for self defense he did it because somebody attacked him so here 
there is no guilty mind in the mind of A, whereas there is a guilty mind, he intentionally did it, right? So when in simple language, what is mens rea is whether there is a guilty mind or not. Whether there is a guilty mind, whether do, did you do it purposefully, whether do, uh, do you do, did, uh, did you do it intentionally with an intention to hurt? So B did it with an intention to hurt. So there was clearly he knew that A is coming and let's uh, grab some money out of it or something like that. So there is an intention which is involved. And that's why it is said that act itself creates no guilty in the absence of a guilty mind. So here in the mind of A, there was no guilt. It was not a guilty mind. He did it for self-defense. Okay. So that's what a guilty. Whereas B did it intentionally to hurt or intentionally to rob Mr. A. So here there is a guilty mind which is involved. He did the action with a guilty mind. So I hope you understand now the difference between what is mens rea. And that's why in most of the uh, Indian penal code, or even if there is a murder which is being involved. So this is a slight, uh, what we would say, uh, a slight deviation from what is being discussed, but just to help you, even if there is a murder of some other person, the most important crucial is what is, was there a mens rea? Whether did the person do it in order to self-defense, in order of self-defense, accidental. So there are many, many sections in the Indian Penal Code. And that's why this become very important, whether there was a mens rea involved or not whether there was a guilty mind, whether the person did uh, do it intentionally to hurt intentionally, whether that intention or uh, whether that uh, entire understanding that what are the obligations, rights a person has and he essentially uses that and in order to hurt that. He knows that other person is going to ha get harmed. He knows that the other person might get hurt, might get killed or likewise. So whether there is mens rea involved, but what taught? Uh, so th the question in taught, how far is the guilty mind of persons is required for the liability of taught? Now, if you remember, we discussed about trespassing, right? Now, trespassing, if somebody just entered into somebody's premises, whether, the, are you going to see whether there is a guilty mind or not? Or whether would you still call it as a trespassing? Yes. So the question here is whether in a tort, whether guilty mind is always required or not is the question. So in it does not mean that the law of torts, the act must be done with an evil motive, but simply means that mind must concur in the act. The act must be done either with wrongful intention or negligence. So here the word which is important also in torts is negligence. Okay. So the case of absolute, we have seen absolute and strict liability, right? Where even if there is a duty to care, whether there is a, in a whether it is, it, you, may, you may not have done it intentionally. So, but can you get out of the guilt? Uh, can you get out of that uh, absolute or strict liability? The answer may be no, because the here the guilty mind or whether you did it uh, intentionally or it was oh it was a negligence on my side these things may not work because that's how the thought is that there are exceptions what we have seen is absolute or strict liability so i hope you get this now okay what else you want me to take Vicarious liability, okay. Okay, Vi vicarious liability. I'll take vicarious liability. So, what is vicarious liability? Normally, the tort feeser is liable for his tort. Okay, but in some cases, a person may be held liable for the tort committed by another. So, vicarious liability basically is if I am the employer and the employee does it, the question is generally what you'll say, oh, I didn't do it. The employee did it, right? Is what the answer would be. But the law sometimes recognizes here that even though it is not done directly by you, 
but because you fall in the cap uh, capacity as an employer or a master or a principal or a partner even though you have not personally done a particular action but you remain liable for if say if it is your partner or if it is your employee or if it is a master servant relation or a principal agent relationship so why carry liability in simple terms or a simple non uh, legal or non technical language if i have to explain it is not something which is done by me because otherwise what we have seen is generally who is getting punished or who is being sued or for damages or any other reason is a person who actually does it right we have seen also privity to of contract and all this we have also seen so the question is whether i have not done it but whether i will be held liable or not the answer would be yes if i am an employer the answer would be yes maybe if i am a master or there is a principal agent so even if something is been done by an agent when and what time the principal would be liable that is what is vicarious liability is that it is not a direct it is i am indirectly liable so it is like though because of the relation like a employer employee a master servant or a principal agent partners because of the relationship per se i am become responsible for the actions even though it's not individually or it is sometimes beyond my control and that's why also we saw about strict liability likewise right so here it is not done directly by the owner of that company or the promoter of that company or the director of the company but because it is being done by the company then the company can be liable or the person can be liable so i hope you get this yeah okay so we have seen this now what is a uh, company secretary's legislation i hope everything is clear to you yes great okay now we see i'm i'm seeing that uh, uh, you are not understood uh, what is uh, lifting or piercing of corporate veil so i will explain you that okay yes so uh, what is corporate personality i'll again a kind of explain you in just one minute not more than that okay so we have seen that a company can uh, uh, employ people a company can own property a company can enter into a contract just like you and me who are natural persons so here though a company is an artificial legal entity a fiction in the eyes of law you can't show right this is a uh, Uh, pd light industries you can't show companies because those are fiction those are recognized under law you cannot see you cannot show them they they are not natural persons like you and me they are artificial legal fiction which is being created in the eyes of law and they can do all the things now the question is whether can you say that and we have also seen about limited liability we have seen the salomon versus salomon case now what had happened in that case if we remember is even though some acts have been done by the company can you hold a, a persons or the promoters liable for those the question is that can you say that oh this is a company and this is a person so it is not the company which has done it this is the person which has been done so here the question of corporate personality is a co company has got a distinct personality which is different from its promoters directors or shareholders so the company is owning the car you cannot say that oh it is a promoter's car no it is a property owned by the company so here the corporation has a distinct personality which is distinct from its directors from its shareholders so the question is now whether this sometimes what happens now since it is a different uh, corporate personality since it's a corporate personality which is distinct from its owners or directors or the persons who are responsible for the management sometimes people misuse this concept of corporate personality and they say for example there is a court order okay that stop the uh, construction of the building over here if there is a court order and it is issued to the company which is carrying on the construction like we saw the company can enter into contracts company can employ people company can earn profits and likewise 
So here, now for example, if the construction is still going on, can somebody say, oh, it is a company who is not doing it? Can you say that just by saying it is a corporate personality and it is not uh, uh, listening to what the court order is? No, it is definitely the natural persons, that is the directors, who are not listening to the court order, right? The, it is the directors or the natural persons who are acting on behalf of me who are not obeying the court orders. So here, the courts will say, oh, you cannot say that it is a corporate personality or the ABC company which is not listening. It is definitely the natural persons who are not obeying the court order. And that's what the court is going to look into such matters, whether it is the company which is doing or it is the natural. So this is called lifting or piercing the corporate veil. The court is going to check that whether it is the company or it is the natural persons who are not acting on behalf of the company and they are using the corporate personality or misusing the corporate personality concept. So this is what about, so if there are uh, fraudulent transactions just to avoid taxations or uh, such kind of examples where it is, uh, say for example, A incorporates many company just to avoid his personal taxes. So there in that case, the court will say, oh, these are not the companies. These are just shell companies. These, the companies are not in operations. Mr. A has just created or incorporated those companies in order to avoid tax or in order to not pay the tax. So here the companies will be lifted. The court may look or pierce the corporate veil saying, oh, these are not the companies. It is Mr. A who has uh, kind of not paid the tax and he has incorporated the companies in order to not pay the tax. So the corporate personality is not going to be mattered over here. The uh, court may consider that this is not a corporate personality, but it is Mr. A who is avoiding the taxes. So I hope you get the concept of corporate personality and what is lifting or piercing the corporate veil. So the court is going to look into the matter where the court believes it is not the company who is doing this. This is the natural persons behind that or acting on behalf of the company who are misusing the per corporate personality concept. Okay, the limited liability or likewise the concept. Great, so I hope you get this. Now, in any other doubts in company law? Yes? Yes, any, any doubts in company law before we move on? Okay, great. Okay, now we'll go to, uh, we have seen this, we have legal reasoning is what we have seen. Great. Uh, so we have also uh, gone through some principles. I hope you can take it ahead. Legal reasoning is also we have seen. What else? So logical reasoning, we have seen certain topics. Yes, deductive reasoning also we have seen. Uh, what else? Any doubts in this? Great, I don't see any doubts. So this is the contents generally, calendars, cause and effect, clocks. Are Oh, I don't know where I skipped the page. I don't know why did I go entirely back. Just a moment. Huh?
yes so uh, we have also solved today the factual situations and uh, uh, the problems attached to it yes so we will just see if we can take we have solved these examples but let's take it again if somebody is interested see uh, this logical reasoning if you see it is almost forming part of any entrance test exam which you may appear for so uh, this logical reasoning most of the things you have it's a simple math sometimes a geometrical uh, thing which is being mentioned the calculations and likewise so this is already you have, you have uh, learned in your uh, what uh, up to 10th standard you have done enough of your maths and things like that so that's why i'm not taking into detail of how you are going to subtract it's a number sequence because these things you must have already been known so i'm my focus is to more help you on what things which will not just come easy when you're reading especially the law aspects of it okay uh, okay so the uh, i there is one so this is the general uh, things like a uh, syllogism or logical venn diagram sequence test insert missing characters alphabet test we we have taken this blood relations if you remember i told you how we have to take this uh, so now i guess there is a request for clocks again i don't think i'll be able to take the entire because this would be easy for you to understand in terms of when there is a clock assigned to it but let me try to explain in a very uh, uh in in a nutshell i would try to explain i'll not be able to explain uh too much of things uh but let me try because this is a kind of a fast track class where we are just kind of revising things okay so okay now the clock concept so this is a very important thing and this will come this requires a lot of calculation by the way most of the logical reasoning also requires calculations so you it you have to have a paper and pen handy and then you can concentrate and then you can draw and then it becomes easy for you to understand okay because just explaining here on webex sometimes becomes difficult it would have been a, a board and a proper uh, uh, teaching it would have been uh, different and easy in such kind of examples i would have shown you a clock and likewise but uh, just to explain you in nutshell so uh, you have to first try understand this concepts which are being mentioned over here okay if you start with this concepts calendar concept then it becomes very easy for you to understand because this is how they have explained here that how things work and then they have given you the answers and the examples so this formulas are also very easy for you so this is, this is also so if i have to take uh, just in brief about this i'll help you so calendar concept that time and i'm not going beyond what is being uh, explained in your module so that you can uh, understand it more better okay so the time in which the earth uh, travels around the sun in a, is a solar system and is equal to 365 days 5, uh, 5 hours 48 minutes and 47 and half seconds so this is what we have studied from uh, our childhood that how many days we have got how the, yesterday only we had the eclipse i hope you must have seen that so this is not new to us then year is 365.2422 days approximately so again this is something which you already know um, maybe in your first standard that how many uh, days are there in a year and so so the common year consists of 365 obviously if it is a leap year how many days are there yes if it's a leap year i hope you understand now leap year ha huh? <laughs> okay great uh, so yes um, so this is what consequently in every fourth year there are 366 days i hope you understand that how you understand by leap year and uh, what is a uh, peculiarity of a leap year yes anybody what is the peculiarity of a leap year yes divided by 4 that's right but when one extra day when yes february 29 so basically on february 29 we generally have the uh, leap uh, so that's why we say that it is a leap year so that is how you understand 
then uh, this is uh, the difference between a common year and a solar year is therefore 0.2422 of a day and we can adding a whole day for every fourth year so i guess is also simple then we see the years which have extra days we have seen leap years so this is how it is the things is to ensure each season may fall at the same time of the year in all years uh, now uh, in the course of time with this correction we should have winter in july and summer in january also so that's what we have generally been observing nowadays that uh, earlier there used to be four months for uh, monsoon four months for summer but with this things are changing now this is what with a small variation the present division of years are those by in bc 46 now this is we'll skip this uh, gregorian mode i hope that is what you understand so in ordinary year there are 365 days that is 52 weeks plus one day okay so therefore an ordinary year consists contains one odd day so this is the calculation which they have mentioned i hope you can go through it now what i want to focus over here is this thing now i come to the uh, important thing about so this was the basics and that's why i am sure you must have done this in your first standard second standard nothing great and not new to you at all now we'll go through this concepts and these are by the way the formulas and equations so if you understand these formulas thus uh, you would be able to quickly solve your clocks related example and this is how they have explained you now i'll, I'll just my uh, i i will help you because a calculation if you see one problem will be if we solve that one problem uh, diligently it will take at least half an hour so i i will not be able to take the problem as such whole but i will help you with the concepts over here so uh, i hope in the clock you understand what is an hour hand what is a minute hand i hope you understand that right so the minute spaces now these are the concepts which you have to understand and this is the gist of how you are going to solve your clocks examples if you understand the formula and equations over here i guess things will be very easy for you to solve the questions okay so the face or dial of watch is a circle whose circumference is divided into 60 equal parts called minute spaces so i hope you understand that minute spaces is divided into 60 equal parts so what we call it as minute space so that's what the technical word for it is minute spaces and hour hand and minute hand i hope you understand a clock has two hands the smaller one is called the hour hand and a short hand while the larger one is called as a minute hand or a long hand so these are the phrases which you should be aware of that what is a hour hand and what is a minute hand which is a small uh, small hand and which is a long hand so i hope this is clear now we know in 60 minutes the minute hand gains 55 minutes on the hour on the hour hand so 60 if you see a clock see uh, even for if the, you are having uh, issues in solving this problems of clocks please take a uh, please take out your a uh, clock from the wall and uh, take it in your hand and try to understand this concepts by just you know uh, checking the dials and making the dials and then i guess you will it will become easy for you to grasp and visualize things because if you visualize this things this will be far easy for you to understand so just actually take the clock from the wall and try to uh, play with that clock try to understand each and every concept which is mentioned over here and then it will when you see that visually it will become easy for you to understand okay so in 60 minutes the minute hand gains 55 minutes on the hour hand on uh, on the hour on the hour hand so 55 minutes if you see it travels 1 2 3 4 like by 55 minutes on the hour uh, on the hour hand now in every hour both the hands coincide one so like i told you if you visualize it will be easy you put the clock and check every hour both hands which are the both hands hour hand minute hand are going to what coincide at least once okay both the hands coincide once so 
uh, when you say that yes 12 12 is that or if you say that 2 10 right 2 2 o'clock 10 minutes past so this is where the both the hands so likewise you may see that every hour both the hands coincide once now the hands are in the same straight line when they are coincident or opposite to each other so are in the same straight line so this is the straight line so if you see the clock goes like this if you see if you imagine the clock and uh, then the the minutes hand and uh, uh, hour hand goes like this or if it is like this or if it is like this so the hands are in the same straight line when they are coincident or opposite to each other okay you get this now when the two hands are at right angles they are 15 minute spaces apart so when there is a right angle which is involved they are 15 minute spaces now this right angle can be uh, occurring any point of time it can be this it can be this so here yes so every time the right angle is being made there there are 15 minute spaces apart so i hope you get this so you have to see or watch the right angle in the clock wherever it is going it will be 15 minute spaces apart when the hands are in opposite directions they are 30 minute spaces apart so this is how the opposites right opposites uh, they are 30 minute spaces apart now this is the general thing about how they are different and if you see the problems are also likewise that okay what is the angle uh, what is the uh, hand if these are opposite hands so these are the formulae which you will have to understand and remember it once you understand it is easy for you to remember but you have to first understand that and like i told you get the clock and try to uh, uh, go uh, uh, you know help that clock and then you will it will the visual effects will definitely help you in this cases now angle traced by our hand is in 12 hours is 360 okay so how much time angle traced by our hand in 12 hours so the 12 hours it goes 360 degrees angle traced by minute hand in 60 minutes is 360 now obviously we know uh, once uh, angle traced by minute hand in 60 minutes so 60 minutes it will trace the uh, 360 so 2 1 uh, 2 o'clock 1 minute 2 o'clock 2 minutes so likewise it traces what 360 degrees in 60 minutes okay so if one in one hour it will uh, trace 360 degrees so here if a watch or a clock indicates 8 15 when the correct time is 8 it is said to be 15 minutes too fast right we understand this we say oh the clock uh, is uh, is drinking water or is sleeping what we say or it's uh, because the cell is gone or something like that we say oh the clock is showing some different timing whereas it is actually something different timing so here if a watch or a clock indicates 8 15 but correct time if you see time to now is 8 o'clock whereas the clock is showing 8 15 what is we what we say oh the clock is too fast right or if it is it is 7 45 we say oh the clock is too slow it is already 8 pm and the clock is showing 7 45 so that is what the difference which we normally understand so this is how the hour and minute hand things work uh, odd days we have seen leap year we have seen ordinary year we have seen and counting of odd days is also we have seen so one ordinary year is equal to 365 days is equal to 52 weeks plus one day so one ordinary year it has one odd day that is what you have to remember so if you uh, get this then you will be able to solve these problems that okay that so if you see that this is how the explanation they have given you in terms of how to solve or how to now you know what is the angle between two you have to calculate that spaces and then you have to find out the angle between two hands when the time shows is particular so if you get that or if they now here they are saying uh, telling you that on the straight line but facing opposite so you can calculate that degree you know the formula which we discussed that this is the formula that what if the angle if it is opposite then whether it is 360 degree or whether how many spaces it travels or likewise so basically once you know the timing and how the uh, uh, degrees are getting covered 
then it becomes easy for you to understand and solve these problems. So basically what I would say again over here in terms of clock related problem, try understanding this and the uh, first uh, thing which has been mentioned because this is the gist of what uh, the clock concepts are. So once you understand the concepts, then it becomes easy for you to understand, okay? So this is exactly the hands of the clock are perpendicular in 15 minute spaces. So the right angle which we uh, saw or uh, the clocks are perpendicular. Now they have given you exactly that uh, the hands of the clock are perpendicular to each other for 22 times in 12 hours and for 44 times in the day. So this they have given you the concepts uh, already and you can check this. Like I told you, get a clock and check uh, that, okay, 22 times and count, actually count. So this can help you remember that, okay, the hands of the clocks are perpendicular to each other for 22 times in 12 hours and for 44 times in a day. So if you just keep on rotating the clock and uh, check that movements, we uh, you can actually get it that, oh, this is one, two, and likewise 22 times in 12 hours. Uh, and for 44 times in a day, the hands of the clock are perpendicular to each other. So this is the con these are the concepts. And uh, the hands of the clocks are 44 times in a straight line per day. So again, if you check this, uh, the clock and uh, understand that, okay, these are the 44 times and you can write it on a piece of paper for better understanding clocks. You can take actually one of these and try uh, doing this, okay? So I hope this becomes clear to you. Okay, anything more you want me to take in logical reasoning? Oh, thank you, you are an amazing teacher. I will miss you, yeah, same here, okay? Okay, I'll give you my mail ID plus, but please don't spam me on that email, okay? Uh, because uh, it was wonderful. Uh, before I end, I, I know I started late, so if you don't mind and I, if you don't have any class next to this, I can extend it for 5-10 minutes. Don't worry about it. So if you have anything, okay. So I've shared you my email ID. Uh, feel free to reach out, but please don't spam me like I told you. Uh, okay, great. Is there anything which you want me to take? Clocks, I guess most of you had mentioned. That's why I've just taken in brief. Okay, thank you. Your teaching is really great. Thank you. Okay, blood relations. Thank you for the wonderful sessions. Okay, thank you so much is what is being mentioned. Okay, uh, before uh, all of your sweet words, I see I there is some one thing which has been explained is, uh, sorry, I missed it. Uh, you wanted something. Okay, great. Okay. Is there something which you want me to take? I'm again asking you. Thank you, I'm the best teacher. Okay, thank you. Okay, okay, I'll help you again with my number, but again, please, I, to the extent possible, I would, I would love to help you, but I, I'm, if you see, there are so many students, right, I, I can't cater to each one of you, though I'm willing to do that. So, if I'm not able to um, respond, please bear with me, okay? So, this is my number. Uh, but uh, please uh, don't spam me with good morning and good night messages or ma'am, please explain this particular thing because on WhatsApp or emails, it is very hard to explain things. I can guide you, I can direct you that read this, but before you come to me, you will have to read what is there in the module at least 10 times and then you have to come to me. <laughs> okay, okay. What else do you want? Anything specific? Yes. Again, coding is what coding, okay, world's best teacher. Okay, this is something <laughs> really, uh, I'm being flattered. Okay, thank you. Uh, yes, so uh, before I just move on, coding and decoding, again, this is some, this is a very easy topic, but again, if you require a pen and pencil and paper in front of you, these are the, if you see the forward uh, order position and backward order position, okay? Uh, so this is the numbers which you may 
either write it down you don't you may or may not remember if you solve too many problems you will automatically start remembering the numbers attached to it but just understand that uh, you may kind of forget as well so it is better to write and then kind of check whether what number if it is m you have assigned it as forward 13 position and uh, 14 backward position you will have to uh, remember it or if you it's okay i don't think you have to remember it but just check if before you write in the exam it should not happen that you thought it was 13 and it is 14 okay so that's very important that you should remember that you don't get overconfident oh i know that its value assigned is 13 and you goof up and make it 14 so just don't do that okay what else okay anything you want in general not related to the syllabus okay i was spider man okay what else you want okay I, i'm not aware of the dates for viva and also i'm so sorry about it i hope uh, you have understood uh, the syllabus now oh i'm not sure whether uh, you were allowed calculator in your exam uh, i guess you better check with the authorities on this okay yes a combination of law and cs really works uh, basically uh, cs is a very uh, the gamut of subjects which are taught in the cs syllabus covers everything okay the problem is people don't concentrate on it so uh, there is a lot of uh, subjects which are covered in detail in theory even if you restrict the cs modules are also absolutely brilliant so even if you uh, go through the modules which are given i guess you almost are done with everything okay i guess that becomes very easy but yes uh, even uh, just being a company secretary also can be fruitful it is not that you need to have some additional degree knowledge is of course you can get uh, as much as knowledge as possible that is not a problem at all but just don't get through from exam perspective it's also important what you understand and you learn okay the objective is to understand and not just mug up please try understand refer the case laws the citations are given to you if most of your inquisitive you can actually uh, google the citation and get the actual case and then uh, read that case that is also possible because of paucity of time i am not able to explain all the cases sometimes but till to the extent i have tried definitely but you can always go visit the cases read the material over it what the judges have held and that will improve your uh, reading also because if we are law students the the uh, the unending thing for us is reading okay we can't stop ourselves from reading uh, the case laws we have to read the case laws we have to read the judgments we have to read the amendments to the act we have to revisit the act so if we are choosing uh, as a legal student uh, reading is unlimited for us so how much ever good reading you do it is definitely going to help you okay any other questions which you have i'll take two minutes okay what else i see okay i like i told you don't worry about jobs right now focus on understanding grabbing knowledge knowledge if you have you can achieve anything in your life that is not a, a rocket science but what first thing is you have to study i hope you have seen three idiots and all what is important is understanding and uh, knowledge jobs things fall on yeah okay what is you have any uh, okay the lectures are already uploaded on the icsi youtube channel students so you can uh, revisit those uh, lectures which if you have missed any lectures and likewise thank you you are the best teacher in the world okay thank you so much uh, what kind of law related study we'll see after the ce set okay so like i told you you can see the modules which are what are the uh, subjects which are being taught okay so those are the uh, law aspects you would be teaching uh, yeah, sorry you would be listening and you would be uh, understanding okay okay thank you you are a perfect law guru ma'am okay thank you guys really means your words really means a lot to me i hope all of you who have attended the exams 
are going to definitely pass and not just pass but you have understood the concepts and you are going to pass i hope that's the promise you are going to make me that it's not just for your exam perspective but you need to understand the concepts and then get it because you may pass here by fluke sometimes by just clicking some mcq but uh, in the real life you may not so i don't want that to happen to you you need to understand the concepts and then apply that concepts okay and yes you can always meet me uh, whenever it is possible for you to i am based out of pune so yes you can definitely uh, come to my office we can definitely but you to just let me know that you were part of the um uh, the curriculum or the part of the study because i don't know any one of you have not seen this is this is a webex so that's why i am not able to see you so i may not recognize you as well sorry apologies for that but uh, unfortunately because of uh, the lockdown and everything we have to go through the webex mode okay so thank you so much thank you i really going to miss you teaching uh, for this wonderful subject and uh, please uh, do let me know in case of any issues to the extent possible i will definitely try to help you but please don't get angry at me please don't kind of uh, feel bad if i am not able to respond because i get hundreds of messages and unfortunately due to paucity of time i am not able to respond to everybody okay so thank you for your patience uh, it is really nice uh, to have you sorry for today i could because of the technical issue i had to join bit late but i hope we have compensated and uh, to the extent possible i will definitely you can read lot of books like i told you there are many books available in the market if if you disable that you are able to online but i would su suggest that stick to your module as of now so that uh, things will be easy because the entire company law runs into hundreds of pages so right, right now the focus is to help you understand the basics so concentrate only on those basics okay so there are a lot of books there are a lot of books whichever you like on internet you may just search or you may go to a bookshop and also purchase if you are not in a, a zone where uh, the books are not uh, physically being able to purchase and likewise okay okay thank you so finally i am ending this call over here and uh, thanks a ton for all your wishes for your kind words you have uh, mentioned in the chat box i am really overwhelmed by that yeah thank you so much and really a uh, pleasure you can also uh, like I, like I, like i told you read it and uh, gain in your uh, life okay and uh, thank you so much <laughs> Thank you. Bye bye. Take care. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you, guys. I'm really overwhelmed by all your kind words, and I'm really feeling bad to uh, sign off over here. Uh, but that's what life is all about. Okay. So thank you so much, and it really means a lot to me. So I'll also take a screenshot if possible, so that. i'll have something in my memories okay bye bye take care a final bye from my side bye bye oh you take uh, took the screenshot okay please please do send me the screenshots if you have taken that will really help i'm bad at technology sometimes thank you so much bye bye take care